Okay, we're now recording and Kathy Baker is going to talk to us about uh, Qualtrics, the survey tool. All right, Thanks, so Kathy. I'm going to share my screen if that's all right. So we can screen two. Can everybody see that? Yes. Okay, good. Let me get this. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, move that, try to get everything where I need it to be. All right. So the key is it looks like people were popping up in chat um, that they have their Qualtrics account. You just want to make sure that you're going in using uncg.qualtrics.com uh, and that will get you all of the, the great and wonderful things that UNCG um, is allowed to do. If you do not have yours yet, um, I think I had sent Sam some information on, on how to get there, but you can go to uncg.qualtrics.com. Um, and if it's your first time on there, you'll have to log in with your single sign on, just like a lot of other things. Um, and then to get access to your account, you choose no, sign in and accept the terms of service, and then it'll give it to you. Um, if you've been in Qualtrics and haven't been in for a while, some of this may look a little new. They did a really big upgrade, I think, last fall. Uh, it's been fairly recent. Um, so things look a little different than they used to. So if it's been a while since you've actually been in there, some of this might not look the same. So um, once you get in, um, one of the new things is you've got this, this kind of home page that you can customize. I have not really customized mine. Um, I have I see it and it's, it's great. One of the nice things um, that I like about it is it shows you if you've got some active surveys, it kind of shows you some um, response rates. And so you can kind of glance and say, oh, look, that's doing really well for me. Um, and your projects, it's got some active project list over here and you can just jump right into creating a new project, which is the surveys uh, right away, or you can go um, to other things. What I recommend if you have not done a whole lot of, of creating surveys in Qualtrics is um, just create a play survey and just do whatever, you know, try the different types of questions and, and send it to yourself, send it to a, a friend, um, you know, to, to play around with different ways of sending it and that sort of thing. And that's the best way to do it. Um, so from the home screen, uh, we're just going to kind of jump right into some of this. You've got um, projects, which is what we're going to spend most of the time in. Uh, you've got catalog, which is um, kind of a, a new thing that uh, Qualtrics has. And a lot of this stuff too, Qualtrics is really big in the business world. So some of the stuff that they have um, probably would not be very helpful to you. But if there's a particular type of project that you are, are looking at, they offer some, or you can just prepare one from scratch. So here's another place that you can um, prepare a project or go to a survey. Um, workflows, uh, we'll talk a little bit about workflows. Um, this kind of helps to guide the way that the survey is set up. Um, directories is your, um, your lists of your um, people that you're sending it to. So. Um, as you can see, I have done a lot of surveys <laughs> for my now five, almost five years at UNCG. Um, and so you can um, create lists and then save them here and then pull them up as needed. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, library, you can set up a, a library of surveys. So if there's maybe a survey that you, you reuse every year, you could put it in your library. Uh, this is a fairly new um, service as well. And of course, you're not going to have the admin because you're not an admin. Um, but most of your time, you'll probably spend in projects. Um, 
So in projects, you see that um, it, I've got my list here and I've got a lot of my projects in folders and you can right down here, you can create a new folder in the bottom left. And so you can click that and create a new folder, um, name it whatever you want, and then you can put surveys related to that in there. And you can see I have a number of folders for some of my different um, projects there. I created a training folder, come on, there we go. And I've got a couple of things. Um, you can see this one that September training to play, that's when I first took Qualtrics way back in the day. Um, and I just have kind of left it active. Um, and then I've got a few other things. So um, once you're in there, to start a new project, a third way to get to it is up in the upper right here, create project. Um, let me see if there's anything else. All right, everybody good so far? I can't see, yes, so. All right. Please stop me if you have questions along the way. Otherwise, I'll just kind of keep on keeping on. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I got a copy of a, a Google form um, from Callie that um, she wants to put into Qualtrics. And so I'm going to kind of base what I do off of that. But again, what I would recommend that you do is just start a new project play around with the project, you know, just do all different kinds of things, create all different kinds of, of questions and that sort of thing, and just use, use it as a playground. Um, so what I did was I clicked on that uh, create project and it took me back to the, the project page. I click on survey and down here in the bottom right is where you actually get started to get into the survey. Another good thing about Qualtrics, they have a lot of good uh, training information, and I'll show you where to get that in a moment. So it has you set up your project. This is right now an untitled project, but I am going to call it library training, and you can see I've already been playing around with that as well. Um, and I'm going to put it in my training folder. You can just leave it in the basic pro uh, project list. And then that gives you some options. We're gonna create a blank survey project. So we're starting from scratch, but if you have an existing project, you can copy that survey. So if you had done something say last year and you wanna use that survey, but um, you know, make a few changes, you can copy the survey over and then go back and, and make changes. Or if you have a survey in your library that you had saved, you can pull that up and then create project. So it's a few more steps than it used to be to actually get into the project and get it started. There we go. So once you start a project, you will see up here, here's the title of the project, library training. And then down the side here, you've got some little icons and across the top here, you've got some tabs. And it goes ahead and it sets you up and kind of starts you out with a question. Um, so we've got survey, workflows, we'll talk about distributions when you're ready to send it out, data and analysis, results, reports. Those are things that we can cover. I think uh, Sam had suggested in another, um, another training. Um, so right here, it automatically puts you into the builder. This is where we're going to spend most of our time. Uh, this next little icon here is your survey flow. Uh, and this is um, a place that we're going to visit in a little bit as you're kind of creating. And you can go in there and move things around a little bit easier looking at that. Um, look and feel. If you want to change the look and feel and pretty it up, they give you some, some themes. Uh, you can change the layouts, um, you can, um, you know, change the style and, and backgrounds and all that sort of stuff, make it, make it look a little different. I don't do a whole lot with this. Um, I just, I'm kind of <laughs> just 
pretty straightforward with my um, um, with my surveys. But if you want to make some changes and make it look a little different, you can play around with that there. Survey options is a good place to go if there's some things that you particularly want to do with your survey. Um, they offer an expert review um, kind of along the way. It, it'll say, hey, you know, you might want to try this, might want to try that. I know I never really use that, but it's there. Um, responses. So if you want to add a back button, um, it doesn't work with some of the survey survey. Uh, flow elements that we're going to be talking about, but if you know that you've just got a basic survey and you want the people to be able to go back, it will put that back button there. If you turn that on, you can also allow respondents to finish later so they can leave and come back to it. Um, that doesn't work with some of the um, ways that you distribute it, but you can just leave that on there. It'll ask you about how do you want to deal with incomplete responses? Do you want to record them, delete them, that sort of thing? It depends on what type of information you're trying to get. Um, do you want to leave the survey open or do you want to set an expiration date? So if you say, I definitely want this thing to be done by midnight on uh, you know, the 28th, then you can you can set that here. Um, same kind of thing here, if you need to do some kind of security, uh, who has access to it, uh, that sort of thing. And then if you want to set up some post-survey emails and all that sort of stuff. So you can, again, play around with, uh, with those options. And if you need to translate it, you can translate your survey. All right. If you've done anything, I'm, I haven't done a whole lot with Google Forms, so I don't know exactly how similar or different this is going to be from Google Forms. But when you get a project set up, um, you have these blocks of questions, and each block is a page in the survey. So as you're, as you're doing a survey, um, the first page appears and that is the first block. And then at the bottom, when it's got the arrow to go to the next page, that'll be the next block. So you want to try to put all your similar questions in a block. And you can add as many blocks as you want. You can put as many questions in the block as you want. Um, but it goes ahead and it sets up your first block and it puts a generic three choice, multiple choice question in there which of course you can change. <laughs> so over here on the left, you've got your drop down for all your different question types. And uh, some of these you'll probably use more than others. Multiple choice, of course, is the, the kind of the go-to um, question type. And so that one is, they put up first. If you want to um, let the people enter text, um, then you can do text entry, and then you can offer single line, multiple lines, if they, you want them to write an essay, uh, that sort of thing. If you want to put some text or graphics, then you can put um, just text, so there's nothing that they choose, uh, nothing that they have to enter, so this might be your introductory information, that sort of thing, or if you want to put a graphic, like there's a logo or something that you want to put, uh, then you can do that. Matrix table, I like this one, and I've used this one a lot. If you have a number of statements um, that are, are off of one thing, so it's like, um, course evaluations are, are kind of running right now for term A stuff or getting ready to run. So if you were kind of doing a, a quick evalu course evaluation, then it might be, um, give me your opinion on how well I did this. And you can put, you know, um, responded to homework, taught the class, you know, whatever. So you can put similar statements uh, all together under one question and uh, do it that way. And you can change the type of, of uh, response as well. Again, they're going to assume that you want a basic Likert scale. You can do bipolar. You can do rank order. Um, 
max diff and some of these again I, I don't usually go beyond the Likert scale but you can change them you can also allow multiple answers uh, drag and drop drop down lists so if you want to change the way that it looks and then how many statements um, and how many points you can change that by just clicking the plus or minus um, if you want to use um, suggested scale points, then you can click this and it gives you some um, kind of standardized points. So if you want to go from strongly disagree to strongly agree with the, the neutral in the middle, you can do that. Uh, the appropriate, inappropriate, and notice it's, it's changing it based on how many scale points I have. So if you change the scale points, it'll change some of these. Of course, true, false, um, you know, definitely false, probably false. You know, it depends on what it is. Um, but you can you can change some of those things as well. Slider, these are pretty cool. If you don't want them to give an exact number, but you want them to say how well is it obviously it's not going to work with that uh, but if you want them to just kind of yeah it's about 60 or yeah it's about 80 uh, you can do the sliders there's also down here graphic sliders uh, which you've got your option of the different graphics uh, for the sliders so those are pretty fun uh, um. Form field, if you want them to, to kind of fill in uh, some information there. Rank order, uh, if you want people to rank something, and there's a couple different ways you can do that. Uh, either drag and drop, or they'll actually drag from one part to the other. The radio buttons, where they click in, this is one, two, three, four, five. Um, text box, where they're just putting in one, two, three, four, five, uh, or just, um, selecting it <clears throat> and if you use a drag and drop you might want to just mention hey drag and drop to give me one um, side by side this is good um, I've used this on a couple of things as well um, where for each column option so you've got um, you know maybe you're answering yes no for for each of these things um, if you need a little more information on each question. Net promoter score, this is kind of one of those business things that you probably won't use. Um, timing, you can you can add a timer to track. I've never done that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, constant sum, again, that's kind of more of a business sort of thing. File upload, you can allow uh, respondents to upload a file if there's um, something that you need them to to give to you. Um, pick group rank. Uh, this may be good if you're using it like in a classroom situation where they they drag into the different um, areas. Uh, drill down, I've never used signatures, heat maps. Again, some of this stuff is is um, a little more for business related or might be in a more in a classroom situation. And the best thing to do if you want to use uh, one of those is there's a lot of good information in the Qualtrics um, realm. So XM support. So if you click on the little question mark, uh, you can type stuff in there and it will pull up and just give you a huge list of, of options for learning about that thing. And it's really good about explaining, here's what this is and here's what that is. Um, so using that to kind of help you learn uh, is good as well. And if I haven't, I will try to remember to send or uh, mention where else you can get some more uh, information. Oh, there's my delivery. All right. Any questions so far? I know I've kind of rambled for a little bit. There are no questions in the chat, but does okay. anyone have any questions for Kathy before? 
she continues. It's been very clear to me. Okay, good. <laughs> and again, the best thing to do is just, just set you up a little test survey and play around with it. All right, so again, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, try to set up um, the form similar to what Callie had sent me and uh, make sure that that I try to cover some of that um, logic, that skip logic and stuff, that, um, branch logic that she had on there. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is in my first block, um, you might want to name the block. So this is going to be um, basic information. <clears throat> and the first question that I want to do is I want to ask for people to give their name. So Please provide your name, and I'm going to give them the uh, the space to put that. Now you notice all of these. You've got the the little ellipses over here. So if you need to to make some changes, move the question, that sort of thing, you can do it from here. There are other ways of doing that as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, but I want everybody to give me their name, so I want to make that a requirement. So you notice that over here. Uh, single line, because I don't know anybody that has a name so long that they're going to need more than that. But you can um, add a response requirement. So if you click right here, you can either force the response, which means that it's not going to let them move forward to the next page until they have responded to this question. So if they try to, it will pop up and say, you've got an unanswered question. Um, or you could request the response where it will pop up a little note if they don't put it and say, hey, could you please respond to this, but it won't keep them from moving forward. And you notice that when I, when I put that force response, it puts a little star over here and it lets you know that this question does have a response requirement. And when you actually go to do the survey, it's not gonna let them move on until they've provided their name. So it's a really good way to kind of make sure that you get the information that you definitely need. Now, the, again, there's a couple ways of getting another question in here. You can either go over here to the right and add a new question. Or if you notice when I hover over the edge of the question block here, it's got little pluses at the top or bottom and a minus here. So this is a quick way to either remove the question or you can add a question below, or if you realize, oops, I need to add a question above, you can click this and it'll put the question above it so you don't have to move that question later. But I am going to add a second question. And on this one, um, again, the form that I'm, I'm basing this off of, this is the checklist of here, uh, here are the, the bits of information that you could possibly give me. I need you to check which ones you're going to be providing for me. Um, so everybody will get this list of requirements. So this is your list of required ah, typing is helpful. And since there could be more than one thing I need to provide information for, um, I'm just going to say, please choose all that apply. And I want to make sure that I come over here for the answer type and allow multiple answers. And that way it will allow people, if they need to give me um, three bits of information, then it will allow me to make three, three check marks. I'm going to change the number of choices to four because that's what I set up in my notes. Um, I am also going to um, force the response on this one because this is the whole purpose of um, doing this. And notice that you can just click on things and change them. So this is going to be 
minus one. And you've got some options for it if you want to do some, some um, pipe text or content or graphics or that sort of thing. You can do that, make it as pretty or as plain as you want. And then this is choice four. And I can't type today, which is fine. Also notice that when I click out of the question box, all of your information on the left over here disappears. But when I click back in it, uh, you get all of this, this information back that you can that you can do. So my first block uh, is your name. It's pick up all the required information. And that's all I want to do on that page because it, this is going to drive my next questions. So the form that I got based on the choices that you make here in question two, then you get another list of questions um, to provide the information. So choice one has a set of information that needs to be provided and a certain set of questions. Choice two has a slightly different set of questions. So what I'm going to eventually do is go back and um, make sure that if this choice one is chosen, that that set of questions comes up. So the questions that go with choice one are all going to be their own block. The questions that go with choice two are going to be their own block. So I'm going to add a new block, which means that all of the questions related to choice one are going to go here. So these are the choice one questions is what I'm going to call it. And I'm going to add a new question. Now here is where I'm just going to start playing around with the different types of questions a little bit. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to put just a text question. So it's, it's more of a statement. Um, So you can give your information and say, the questions below relate to whatever choice one was. So to remind the people, this is why you're getting the, these set of questions. Or you can put instructions in there or information about the upcoming questions in there, whatever you need to do. Uh, and that's fine. And then this is where you can start playing around with your different types of questions. And you can however you want. I'm just making up stuff at this point. <laughs> and so, you know, maybe you want to have a slider and maybe you want to have a matrix table on this one. The fun thing about this, you get to make up stuff. Now let's make do some suggested statements. Uh, disagree to agree. All right. Oh, there we go. All right. So maybe the first choice only has two questions related to it. So then I'm going to do the same thing for the second choice. And same thing, I'm going to do text first. And a new question. Uh, 
maybe and then here's block three whoopsie and let's do a where is it rank order here we go And let's do a side by side. Now on the side by side, you can move things around. Uh, you can again put some open ended text, some single answer. Oops. And then I need choice four. And we'll just do I'm kind of rushing through this because I want to get to the uh, the logic part of this. Also notice that it automatically gives you an end of survey block down here. You can change this if you want. I usually just leave it as is, or if you want to add, add, excuse me, if you want to add some information down here, you can, um, but it automatically gives you that. All right. So I have set up all the questions on my survey. And now I need to kind of start doing some of the logic. So the way that it's set up is, the way I would like for it to be set up is, based on what choices you make here, then you will see the appropriate blocks of, of questions related to those choices. I don't need to see the choice one questions if I didn't choose choice one up here in this question. So you need to set up some branch logic and some skip logic. And this is kind of what I wanted to get into. Um, branch logic is what's going to allow you to say, okay, based on the questions up here, show this, don't show that, that sort of thing. And the easiest way to get to that is in your survey flow. So if you go over here to the left and you click on that survey flow little picture there, you will see here's your survey right now. It's these five blocks, the basic information block, choice one, choice two, choice three, choice four. And here's why you can see it's kind of important to name those blocks so that you know what you're looking at on this page. So with these blocks, you can add things below it. You can move the blocks, duplicate the blocks, delete the blocks from here without having to do that in the main survey. So it kind of, if you need to do something to the whole block, it kind of makes it easier. But what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to add a condition that says, um, if you make certain choices in the second question of this block, then you need to see uh, these things. So what you can do is add below and you see all of these different options here. So um, you can add another block, you can add a branch, embedded data, um, end of the survey, <laughs> that sort of thing. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna branch. So it says, okay, if something happens in this first block, then something else is gonna, uh, gonna happen. So it says this branch will not be triggered until you add a condition. So yes, I wanna add a condition. If the question, because I'm dealing with the questions, well, which question? If question two has choice one is selected, okay? 
then I want it to go to um, this first block. All right, so if choice one is selected, then you can choose the block there or you can take this block and drag it, which is which will be the easier thing. So once I'm able to go through the survey, if I choose that first choice in that second question in the first block, then it's going to pop up this block one set of questions. If I don't choose that one, these aren't going to show up now because it's not in the main flow of the survey, but it is conditioned upon making that first choice. Now, I need to add another branch. So if that same question, now choice two is selected, then I'm going to go to block two. And if, so this makes it a whole lot easier. If choice three is selected, then we're going to go there. And then one more. If choice four is selected, then where'd my branch go? There we go. There. And so again, you can you can move these around. And so I'm going to kind of move it around so that they're in order. And notice that the, whoops. There we go. So I just want to make sure that they're, they're showing up in order just to make it neater. It doesn't have to be that way. Uh, but you can make it neater that way. You can add more elements if you want. Uh, you can delete things, duplicate things, uh, all that sort of stuff. So it's a really good way you could move. If you just wanted to move your blocks around, if you didn't have to branch anything, you could do that from here as well. Let me see. OK, so once you've got it the way that you want it, you got to go all the way down to the bottom here and click apply. Otherwise, it's not going to do it. That's the one thing that I don't like about this is that applies like way down there. And if you aren't paying attention, you might forget it and then it won't happen. So. Now, how do you know what that's going to look like with the survey? you can preview your survey. And so the best thing to do is hit preview and it shows you the survey, how it's gonna look on a phone and how it's gonna look on the screen. And it gives you your little advanced buttons here. And look at there. Because I had set up, hey, you have to answer these questions, I tried to advance without providing my name or making my choices here. And so I need to make those choices. And because I did choice one, here are my questions for choice one. I didn't choose choice two. Oops. This is for choice three.
I didn't put a introductory one in there. And then I'm at the end of the survey. You can restart the survey or you can go back. Can I move this? Hmm. Do you know if I can move this out of the way, Sam? I can't get to my... Move the Zoom thing? Yeah. Yeah, I usually just minimize my browser and then... Yeah, and then... Oh, okay. It's annoying. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> it is. All right. Um, questions. I see some stuff in the chat. I didn't know if that's from earlier or. That's from earlier. Okay, cool. A drink of water. Yeah, brown says yeah. It's great. I think it's very clear. Okay. Um, the only thing I have, uh, I, I'm guessing you're heading that direction, mm -hmm. um, but to kind of go through some exporting of results and what data and analysis does in Qualtrics. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to do distributions real quick because um, you got to get it out there before you can get your, your information. But yeah, we can. Um, do results real quick. So distributions, come on, there we go. Um, again, there's a number of different ways to do it. What I usually do um, for the purpose of, of this survey that we set up, you probably want the single reusable link. And then this is something that you can put in an email, you can post to a, you know, a website and just say click here uh, and it'll take you to the survey. Um, what I often do is with mine is um, set up an email. So I've got contacts in that uh, contact list, that directories list, and then you just choose which contacts. Uh, to put your contacts in there, you create a CSV file with um, first name, last name, email, and you can save that, upload that, and then just choose the list. Um, you can set up, customize when to send it. So I always like to set mine up a couple days in advance and then change the time. The one thing you have to watch out for is that Qualtrics is based out somewhere in Mountain Standard Time, which is two hours behind us. So if you set this up, like I always like to set mine up to go out at 8 a.m., but if you click 8 a.m. here, it's not going to go out till 10 a.m. our time. So I, I learned that the hard way when I went to look. I was like, why is my survey not gone out yet? Because it wasn't 8 a.m. <laughs> Mountain Standard Time yet. Um, you can put your subject in. What I usually do is just um, have something typed up to, to cut and paste to put in there. But you do not want to take this information out. This is the actual survey link that Qualtrics will, will put in there. You can send a preview email um, and that sort of thing as well. Once you get results, now I did that, that preview. It will put preview information in there. Um, so if you click on results and you can see that there's a new improved version of it that I haven't messed with yet. Um, you can kind of look at your results. Come on. Oh, you want me to try it now? So you see, this is this is kind of new and improved. Um, but it will go and pull any information that you have, and you can kind of see it question by question on here. Uh, 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 and it takes a moment sometimes to. OK. 
Not much. It's going to be slow today. Right, let's go back to the other. So you can see you've got some edit. I've got one. Oh my. So what it does is it is it pulls up the information and you can change the visualizations on here so you can kind of create your own report. There we go. Um, So like here, you see it automatically because it was a, a a multiple choice. It automatically just gave me the min, the max, the mean, the standard deviation. Um, you can, if I wanted to make a pretty visualization of that, I can click on add visualization. There we go. Um, and then it gives you some choices over here. I could make a bar chart out of it. And you see there's the bar chart. I can change the way it looks. Um, you've got your, your different uh, choices over here, different color palettes, et cetera, et cetera. You can remove it uh, if you don't want. And so it, it offers some suggestions of um, some visualizations. And you can change them. You can tweak them. Uh, retrieving data. So if you want to kind of create your own in Qualtrics, you can do it there. What I usually do, here we go. Um, if you click on data and analysis, then what it does is it kind of shows you the list of um, options. You can choose which questions show up on here. So if you just want to kind of get an idea of, hey, who are the people that have responded um, and what choices do they have? So you can just kind of say, oh, Kathy responded. She made two choices. Uh, if you want all questions on there, you can do that. But what I usually do for my purposes is export the data. And so uh, you can export it as a CSV, as an Excel, uh, to SPSS if you, anybody uses that anymore. Um, probably not your Google Drive, um, since we're going away from, <laughs> from all of that. Um, but what I usually do is, is export it, say, to Excel. And you can use just the numeric values in the different things, or you can use your choice text and then download it and go in and, and do visualizations and stuff from there. It just depends on what you want. Uh, of course, you have some some more options uh, for that, but for the purposes of what I do, I usually just pop it into an Excel, and then I can do all my analysis and stuff um, from there. Sorry, my husband. <laughs> And then I haven't created any reports yet, so no reports there. But this is where I have played with, with this area. So um, to create some things to then put into a report. And again, I would just play and then you can share it by a Word document or a PDF document or that sort of thing, just depending on what you want over here. Did that kind of help? Yes, it's helped me. If you need any more information, um, basecamp.qualtrics.com has a lot of uh, videos and uh, helpful information or just clicking on the question mark within Qualtrics uh, and it the XM um, base camp stuff 
kind of pulls up in there. And so you can get, they've got some, some basic videos on how to do some, uh, use it for research or and some of these customer experience things, those are more business related. Uh, but you can get some information from there or just click on the question mark right up here, type in what you want to look for and it will, there it goes. It's being slow today. Um, so I was I was looking at creating a workflow. And so it gives me all this information about workflows. And this has got a lot of good stuff right here. And it will just list out everything that you need, give you examples, and you can just play around with it. Great. Does anyone have any um, questions for Kathy? We have um, seven minutes left. I thought it was very clear. I don't have any questions because it was so clear. Oh, good. <laughs> I, I was trying to to go, you know, like I said, based off of that survey, but. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Brown. What's up? No, no, it's fine. I was, I was going to ask on behalf of uh, one of our users who uh, relies upon um, the branching logic to be mm -hmm. able to loop. So if if you start at question one and it takes you to choice four, can you get from choice four back to question one again? I don't think you can loop back um, to something earlier Okay. in the, um, yeah, it, it doesn't allow you to go back, which is, I think, what this form originally did in the Google forms is you go back and then you make another choice. That's why I made question two a choose all that apply and then branch off of there based on what they chose here. So I'd made the choice one and three when I did the preview. So it did not give me the two and four blocks. So it's it's kind of, please choose all that apply now and I'll give you the information that's requested uh, based off of that because it does not let you go backwards and, and loop through like that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I apologize if you showed this. I might have um, just missed it. But is there a way to add in um, or like I know you can add in like one collaborator or collaborators into a form, but is there a way to create like a folder? Um, oh, you should. OK, so it would be under. Yeah, so I, I, I didn't I didn't okay. show it. But um, yeah, when you're on your projects list, over here to the right under mm -hmm. project options, this is where you can provide collaborators. So you can, if you want to collaborate with somebody and then you just type in who all you want to collaborate with, you can also put, um, sometimes my name is under Sam Harlow and sometimes it's Samantha Harlow. I don't know. Um, there's also a Samantha Harlow student. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> That's me. Okay. That's the second one. Uh, yeah. So you can add it. I could. I could give you an invite, and you can also once you've invited them, then you can pick and choose what uh, abilities they have. So if you don't want them distributing it or copying <laughs> it or anything like that, then you okay. can uncheck so like, it. It is possible then to create a folder of like surveys um that then you could share with like a whole department and then they could like make copies of it i believe a folder yeah and then create folder i haven't tried to do I'm just thinking like we could have a department folder of, you know, like assessments and have librarians make copies of it. Mm -hmm. Let me go back to the projects list here. I think rename folder move to 
So it doesn't look like it it allows that for folder. I think you just have to do it by the survey. By the survey. Um I wonder. Great. Yeah, I don't know. I think I erased you. No, it's fine. Um, <laughs> um, does anyone else have any questions? People are um, giving you praise in the chat. Well, I want to be okay. sensitive to your time, Kathy. I know it's close to um, four o'clock. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for coming. Um, thank you all for coming as well, who were in here. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can also email Kathy, but um, I dropped the link for Basecamp um, Qualtrics too, uh, for y'all to play around with documentation. Um, yeah, thanks, Kathy. Again, this was really super helpful and- we will send the recording out to the library if that's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. No problem. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Have a good afternoon. Bye, everyone.